Hello, it's uh, Michael Reese here, and I'm here to take you through a very important training. Um, I do have a fancy dancy uh, remote here. It's called the new iPhone, so I'm going to be using this to control the screen. And uh, I'm going to take you through this training that I think is important. Um, recently, I was asked a question, and the question was, you know, when I got started, if I was going to help my son or a family member or a loved one, um, really even a relative, um, if I was going to help them be successful in real estate, what would I do or what would I teach them? And so I'm going to walk you through exactly what I've come up with would be the answer to that question. And hopefully this will be very uh, um, powerful for you. Uh, I'm going to share with you kind of the strategy. And my goal is to give you some real directive on how to actually take this information and execute it. And everybody can. It's what I would do. And so hopefully you'll see value in it. If you don't, it's okay. It's not for everybody. Um, but it is for people who want to go out and get listings. Um, and, and primarily people who want to take over neighborhoods. So um, this was a study that I was turned on to. It was put out recently by Inman and it was commissioned uh, between Keller Williams and Baylor University Research uh, cold call study. You can actually Google that and see it. And here's what the cold call study said. It said that um, they actually did a study where they made 6,264 calls. And as a result of making those calls, it was pretty interesting. They actually contacted 28.4% of those people and that would be what we call as your contacted rate. And this information is just going to lead up into what I would do and the strategy behind why I would do it. Um, they set 19 appointments, which I think is pretty interesting. And um, there's, uh, they got 11 referrals. So, you know, this says a lot. Um, it doesn't tell you what the script was. It doesn't tell you, you know, if they had phone numbers. Um, there's a little bit of information missing from here, but it is a cold call study. And what we can, what we can basically... Um, uh, reverse engineer from here is that what it came down to is if you made 208 calls, you actually would get one appointment or referral, which is, hey, listen, that's a pretty good uh, deal in my marketplace. Not sure about yours, but that is a um, pretty big commission here. And so also what that translated to was for every 60, 60 people that were contacted, you could get one referral, which is, hey, not too bad. Also, what we found was that um, the people, let's see here. Uh, assuming that you can make 50 calls per hour uh, and in six hours you could get one appointment and for every two appointments you could get one listing. And so assuming the average commission was let's say $4,641, which I think is very, very light in my market, that's probably, um, probably a third, but that would equal to a return of your time per hour of $386.75. So I remember reading the book, Ultimate Sales Machine. You, if you haven't read it, it's an amazing book by Chet Holmes. You should definitely look into getting it. And he talks about new salespeople, seasoned salespeople, and a couple stages in between, and how much time they should be focused on generating new listings. So you have activities that service a sell and create a sell, and these are definitely activities that you could do that would help you create a sell. It's what I did. So why is this important? Well, this is important for a couple reasons. One of the things that I think is, is important for us to know is that we all know every single year we are fighting, we are battling and fighting what we call is the seasonality curve. Okay. And the seasonality curve is basically when you take all of the cells and divide them into and put them into the category of the months in which those cells take place. What you'll see here is that there's certain months that actually contribute to the overall sales uh, annual sales more than other months. So said differently, um, what I have found, and this has always been my philosophy, is December has always been one of my best months, and it's because what I'm doing in November, what I'm doing in October. So if you're having a bad month, it's probably indicative of what you've been doing the last 90 days, but the great part about it is, is you can have a great start to the next year, or you can have a great start to the next month, or you can have a, uh, a great start to the next quarter, if you just understand that you're in control of your results. And if you're not getting enough listings, then you have to be able to counterbalance what's going on in the marketplace. Simply put, you either have enough leads, enough sphere of influence, enough contacts, and if you don't, the strategy that I'm gonna share with you is what I would give to my children, and the reason why is because this would allow them, as long as they had the right mindset, I can't give you the right mindset. I can't convince you that you are going to have to talk to people when you sell real estate. And in order to be really good at it, you're going to have to talk to people you don't know. And that talking to them over the phone is way more leverageable than, you know, doing it some of the alternative ways. And I can't convince you that you're going to run out of your sphere and that you can't just sit around and wait. Um, 
I didn't do that. I actually uh, put four homes under contract my first 30 days in real estate. And again, if I'm helping my child, our friend, our loved one who is struggling, I would have, have them cope with the reality of the situation and say, well, what is your goal? How many contacts do you make every week? Um, I, I know that you want to be a huge uh, seven figure team. Uh, one day, but this is what those individuals did when they were at your stage. So, and when they stopped doing it, they started training other people on their team to do it. So if you're not going to do this and you got people on your team, then it's really, um, it's, it's, you're really responsible for helping them hit their goals. And with agents productivity is now on people's team. It's like a lot of them are little birds waiting for the rainmaker to drop a little worm in their mouth. Um, but not the best teams. The best teams that I have seen have a standard and the standard is high and they hire professionals. And this is what I think a professional would do. So um, here's how you would actually execute this strategy, okay? You would actually start with targeting um, uh, your target turnover rates. And what I mean by that is in 2014 and 15, we actually had a 12 month run rate where we generated 1.2, we had what we called the $1.2 million seller campaign. And what that means is we spent, um, we went out on a nationwide basis and we generated 150,000 uh, 150, seller leads. These were just your home evaluation leads. Some were for Google, um, some were for Facebook. There's a, there's a lot of information in, the, if you analyze that data, that was very helpful. But for the purpose of this, um, what we learned was the average cost per lead across the entire country was $8. And the turnover rate was 9%. So when I'm saying, when you're looking for a turnover rate, what that means is if you want to take over a neighborhood, okay, um, and this is, this is not indicative of some of the neighborhoods where, you know, the average sales price is almost six fig or seven figures. If, it, if that's the case, then you might make some adjustments here that would be in direct correlation to the adjustment you're making in the commission that you're going to receive. But in a, in a medium home sale price across the country, um, most markets, you can find turnover rates in neighborhoods of 9%. That's, that's doable. And if you can, then what I am proposing is that you would actually be just as successful you would be just as successful calling into the neighborhoods as you would be running ads, waiting for them to respond to the ad, waiting to get the lead, calling the lead back, calling the lead eight times, calling it on 17% of the time on a Saturday, 17% on a Sunday, 34%. And then hopefully that, that lead lives in an area and is living in a house that is in a price point that is, um, fits with your goals. With this strategy, you can go into neighborhoods, neighborhoods you want to take over, you can find neighborhoods and I'll show you. This is actually my market. And in my market, the trails, we have a neighborhood with a 14.3% turnover rate. We have another neighborhood with a 13.8% turnover rate. Now, the reason this is important is in the trails, they're, they're, almost, they're almost double the average transaction price in my marketplace. That is amazing. So if I could go out and run ads on Facebook or Google, which a lot of people are doing and competing in a red ocean, or, and then, and then here's the thing, if I start today, by the end of the first 30 days, if I do a really, really good job, I might generate 91 leads and 91 times eight, let's say it's 90, what's that, uh, 70, $720. Or I could go get the phone number for everybody in this neighborhood for a few cents, maybe 10 cents, let's say. Now that I have every phone number for that neighborhood with the right script, I can not only focus on that neighborhood, but I can also, I can, I can, I can start to get what I would call is market share. And once you start getting market share in a neighborhood, once you, I mean, like for instance, in that neighborhood, maybe you only have to sell three to be the top agent in the entire neighborhood. That starts to compound and help you. So first you have to get the data to call. That's what you have to do first. And so um, how do you know once you get the data, if it's good, there's a lot of places you can go out there and get data. Um, but you're going to want to monitor the contact rate. Um, you're also going to want to uh, monitor the cost per contact, and you're going to want to um, you're going to want to monitor your appointments per contact. Those are kind of baseline metrics. So there's no reason to be emotional in this strategy. This is just a campaign. What I would call is you have inbound campaigns, you have outbound campaigns, and those campaigns have leads and those leads have a cost. And as a result of the investment in that campaign, you make an ROI. And this is, this campaign allows you to be predictable because here's one reason I'm able to get somebody within the same day by noon, I could train somebody on this script and by noon they could be producing results for me. There is a couple cons. Um, you tend to have longer cash conversion cycles, meaning when you generate, um, with the script that we use to find out and identify the people, sometimes 
you know, maybe they're not going to do something till February or April or May. But if you make that investment and you, and you can do it, let's say for 90 days, then you're always, like I said earlier, you're working with the business today that you generated 90 days ago. And that evens out that seasonality and it gives you predictability. In fact, we did 131 nurtures the very first month of January of 2016. And by June, June 1st, what we found is over a third of those nurtures actually listed their house. So I don't know if you either start June next year, wondering where your business is gonna come from, or if you're gonna start building that pipeline along the way. Um, the choice is easy. Um, I know what I would do is I would play the long game and understand that as I'm playing that game, I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna, tap, I'm gonna talk to people that are ready to do business today. So. All right, so let's go into this. Uh, here's the script. First and foremost, you can download the script for free here on the page below. We actually have some calls that were um, live calls that I'll make available for you guys to listen to so you can see the script in action. And again, scripts are supposed to be internalized and made your own. So I'm just going to walk through the high level points and then you can take it and, and, and listen to the calls. So um, let me just tell you how the script's broken down so you can understand. It's basically broken down into these fundamental areas, which is the introduction, um, the transition, the pre-qualifying, the close, the pre-qualifying again, the trial close if you have to, and the close, which we always know a trial close with the close is always the components that make up a good script. And so when you go through it, you'll be able to see these um, areas within the script. You'll be able to see the introduction. And people have different preferences. Remember, you can get off of the script a little bit um, and make it your own. That's what I think really makes people great with scripts. This is a framework, and this is a framework for you to understand the direction of the call, but you don't want to sound scripted. Um, and then here's the transition, so you can see how we're using their name. You'll just plug in the person's name. Again, follow through the transition, through the pre-qualifying, and then here is the close. And the close, as you can see here, um, if they're unsure, then we go one route, and then we have some bullets. Then we have if they're willing to meet. And so when they're willing to meet, we want to know that. Um, Pre-qualifying, a couple things to make note of on the script is that you're doing one or three things on the call. You're either setting the appointment um, or, or you're getting their information, which is what I would call is permission-based marketing again. And this right here is where you're actually asking them. So in the pre-qualifying and in the transitions, you're also, if, the, if, if you're on the script and they're not basically ready to, um, they're not an ideal person for you, meaning they're not looking to list their home anytime soon, then you still want to make that call purposeful. And the reason this script is written this way is because at the end of the day, if you have everybody's email in the neighborhood, you can set up custom audiences, lookalike audiences, you can target them, you can email them, you can give them obviously these market updates that are easy to produce. Um, then you have your trial closes, and this is really good because we're gonna go off motivation, and th this is just, as you go through any script, you're gonna be able to read through this. You'll want to, what I would say is role play this so that it becomes natural, and you'll know that you'll be talking to some people that feel a little standoffish. They're, maybe their answers are real short, but I'm telling you right now, you'll talk to just as many that will talk to you all day long. And your goal is you're looking to find that one person um, that, that, that backs the, what the stats say is, is I think the last statistic I heard um, was, it was, it, was a, it was a large percentage of people, I'm not gonna make statistics up on the spot, but it was a large percentage of people uh, do business with the first person they come in contact with. So we wanna be able to leverage that. And again, you don't wanna be disencouraged when you talk to somebody that's not ready. You just wanna follow this and understand how to identi identify motivation and how to talk to the people that are motivated, understanding that, hey, there's some people that are simply not gonna be motivated. Um, and then you have your transition to the close. And this is basically what makes up the script. That's the framework. Again, you can download it on the page. I would love for you to listen to a few of the calls we've done with the script so you can see how we've made it our own. You should make it your own too. The primary objective is all you are asking simply is if they know of anybody who's gonna be making a move, in, a, a move in the neighborhood. And you, know, you can do that by leveraging the traditional survey script. We do it with our open house script. We do it with our just listed, our just sold script. All of those give us the same framework where we're trying to simply find out who in the neighborhood is going to be moving so that we can put those people into a campaign. And that means we can make an investment into staying top of mind and getting in front of those people. And so I think that this is a great strategy. So anyway, one thing you have to understand is at the end of the day, there's one or three outcomes. People are either going to be selling now, they're going to be selling in the next 12 months, or they're not going to be selling. What I like to focus on is the people right here the people that are gonna be selling now. We, we have a percentage of all the nurtures that are gonna sell in the next 12 months that we capture. 
And you can, you can impact that by calling, sending handwritten letters, which is what you're going to do when you first make a contact with any of those individuals. But at the end of the day, you're going to start to take market share. If you know in a neighborhood there's 37 people that are moving next year and you have another neighborhood where there's 67, you can, you can take that, those emails, put them in a custom audience, you can run campaigns to them, you can email them, you can text them, you can stay in contact with them, you can nurture those relationships. So um, a few tips uh, if you are going to ex exercise a, a strategy like this is make sure you have the right data. We use tons of different data. I'm not here to say who's good, who's bad, who's different. Um, all I am saying is that you don't be emotional about it. Test it. And when you test it, test it with the three critical metrics that I gave to you. If you have a day where you are not, you find yourself servicing a cell, you find yourself doing things that are not dollar cost productive. I just want you to going forward. This is what I would tell my son. This is what I would tell my kids. This is what I tell my loved one is ask yourself, am I doing $500 an hour work or am I doing $25 an hour work? You want to get an ROT, a return on your time. And sometimes we find ourselves being busy. And what we're really doing is we're, we're running from the things that actually produce the results we want because we think that the way that the, in our mind, it's a constraint in thinking that, hey, people are just supposed to randomly call us and do business with us. I'm telling you, I trained some of the top agents in the country and none of them, none of them would have a problem with doing this, have either done it or did it for a while and paid somebody else to do it or are currently still doing it. So this isn't a matter of if it works. If you're not willing to do it, then you have to ask yourself by solving the right problem, why? And it's because you just have a belief. You have a limiting, disempowering belief about what it's going to take to get to your goals. Because my thought and my philosophy is if you don't have every single thing that you want in your real estate business, it's simply you haven't learned something yet. So I hope you learned something today. Um, I hope this is something that you feel empowered. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to um, send them over. So if you like this training, then you can join our community online and uh, post any questions you might have, whether it's about what data, what script, what bandwidth, what computer speed, VOIP, um, any of those types of things. Um, what economic model, what numbers are questions maybe more specific about your market? I'd be more than delighted to share. We have a lot of uh, cool little tools we've posted in there to share with people who are looking to execute a strategy that gets them more predictability and gives them the ability to fight what we would call that seasonality curve, where when the market starts to slow down, you don't have to slow down. You can be um, proactive in making sure you have your pipeline full. So hopefully you enjoyed this um, uh, presentation today and this training, and I appreciate your time, and thanks for spending it with me.